From Hollywood, it's time now for... Johnny Dollar. Hello, Johnny. Sam Rubin. Oh. What's the matter, kid? I don't know. It's a feeling I get every time I hear your voice on the phone, Sam. Now, what does that mean? Well, the last time you called, I took a job and had to hock my watch for cable fare in Hong Kong. That's what it means. <laughs> so I bought your new watch, didn't I? What's in your mind? Ed Julian. Ed Julian? So long, Sam. No, no, no. Wait, wait a minute. Johnny, Johnny, this is important. I need help. If you're fooling around with somebody like Ed Julian, you sure do need help. Go call a cop. They can't help me. I'm calling you. Johnny, for old time's sake. I'll see you after breakfast, Sam. Tonight and every weekday night, Bob Bailey and the transcribed adventures of the man with the action-packed expense account. America's fabulous freelance insurance investigator. Yours truly, Johnny Dollar. Expense account submitted by Special Investigator Johnny Dollar. To Samuel Rubin and Associates, Insurance Brokers, Majestic Building, Hartford, Connecticut. The following is an accounting of expenditures during my investigation of the Salt City matter. I didn't know it was going to be that, Salt City, I mean. But I did know the name Ed Julian. Every policeman in the country knew that name. My first impulse was to hang up the phone on Sam, but I didn't. Instead, I spent 85 cents, that's my first item, on cab fare to get me to Sam's office. Welcome, Johnny. Long time no see. Come on in. Sit down. Have a smoke. I'll Sam Rubin about looked about the same as I remembered him, and he acted about the same. He shook my hand, pushed a cigar at me, held up a $160 lighter, and smiled. Oh, Johnny, Johnny, I'd like to have you on my permanent payroll. Well, now, that'd be something. <laughs> Are you making me an offer or just talking? No, I suppose I'm just talking. But you're good to look at, you know? It gives me confidence. You no, know, a little outfit like I got here, I can't afford high-priced talent like yourself for a steady diet. Why don't you sit down, kid? You'll pardon me, Sam, but I don't feel sorry for you. You're right about every kind of insurance that's ever been issued. Oh, well, yeah, sure, but nothing like those big operations that you're used to. This is all little bitty companies. Yeah, so I make a living. A man having his own company, running it by himself. Ten of his own companies. So it's ten times as much trouble, though. Listen, what do you know about Ed Julian, Johnny? He had quite a name in Chicago and Los Angeles, Hoboken... I thought he was in jail these days. Who, oh, Ed? No, got himself out of jail. Must have been three, four years ago. Sure, went into enterprises in uh, Florida, California. Very legitimate fellow. Oh, I'm sure he is. Let's get to the point, Sam. Well, you're working for me, aren't you? I don't know whether I am or not. I haven't heard what it's all about. About? It's about Ed Julian, that's what it's about. All right, I'll lay it right out for you. Here, look at this. $50,000. $50,000 I got to pay his widow if something happens to him. You'll pardon me again, Sam, but when you collected that first premium on him, and I yeah. take it you sold him $50,000 worth of life insurance, you should have thought of this part of it. What, has something happened to him? No, nothing's happened to him. I'm afraid something's going to happen to him. I'd have to get this money up. <laughs> I'm just going to listen to you talk because it doesn't seem to do much good asking you questions. So <laughs> go ahead, Sam. Talk, talk. Maybe something will come out. All up. right, but Johnny, don't be shrewd with me, huh? Now, the policy was issued maybe a month ago. I personally... <laughs> I personally, I wouldn't sell a man like Ed Julian life insurance, any kind of insurance. He's not a calculated risk. He's a lousy, long-sided bet. Man like that. The enemies he makes. Ooh. He's a bad fellow all the way around. But here it is. It's on paper. I'm stuck if anything happens to him. Now, Johnny, the man's living in San Francisco now, and all I want is you go to him and ask him to cancel the policy, Okay. <laughs> Sam, how did you ever get the insurance bill? No, no, Johnny, please. Why don't you go to San Francisco, handle it yourself? Johnny, I I'll can't... I'll tell you why. Because you know and I know there's no way for me or you or anybody else to approach Ed Julian and ask him to cancel out this policy. What it amounts to is that you want me to go there and keep an eye on him until you can break the policy. Isn't that it? Not necessarily, Johnny. What do you mean, not necessarily? All right, all right, so you're right. Listen, I heard through the grapevine there's a large collection of Ed's old friends visiting in and around San Francisco just a few days ago. It makes me very nervous. I have already a blood pressure condition. Friends who days. might want to shoot him down? Yeah, that's the kind of people, yes. $50,000 payoff would hit me very hard this week. All right, next week maybe not so hot, but this week, oh boy, the market. Are you playing with company funds? No, again, no, it's Sam. a calculated risk I'm entitled to take with company funds. They entrust me. All right, all right. Now, will you please sit down and study this thing out with me? 
What's I'm always asking you to sit down. You never do. I also never study anything with you. Sam, how much? Well, expenses, $500 bonus. Why, Sam? No, no, wait, wait, wait. Johnny is so impatient. I'll make it a thousand, thousand dollars bonus. Take care of yourself. No, no, See no, you. Listen, Johnny, look, look, Johnny. All you have to do is keep him alive till I break the policy responsibility. My lawyers can do that. They told me it'll take a couple of days. I don't have to do anything, Sam. Now, how'd you get that policy? It was in a bundle of stuff came in from the coast. Ed Julian took this out under his real name, Eduardo Saccovetti. Now, who knows it's Ed Julian? Skip the gestures and tell me how you do know. Well, my broker out in San Francisco. Her name is, uh, I don't know, Straubert Street or something like that. She sold it to him. Later on, she found out who he really was. She sent me a wire. So, uh, a thousand's okay, huh? No. So, how much? Twenty-five hundred and You're expenses. crucifying that me! That watch you gave me never kept time. All right, never. all right, all right. Twenty-five hundred. Twenty-five hundred. <laughs> Expense account item two, one hundred and sixty-eight dollars and seventy-three cents. Airfare and incidentals, Hartford to San Francisco. I arrived at eight in the morning. On the way in from the airport, the fog began to roll in from the bay. From my hotel room at the Fairmont, I looked out in time to see the provision barge moving out toward Alcatraz before the fog closed in completely. Somebody said the storm warnings were up all along the coast, and somebody was right. By 11 o'clock, a light rain had begun to patter over the fog-bound Bay City. Item 3, 23 bucks, one trench coat. I was wearing it when I spent another buck, item 4, cab fare. This time to get me from San Francisco's Fairmont Hotel to Ed Julian's address on another part of San Francisco's Knob Hill. There in the drizzling rain, I interviewed not Ed Julian, but one of San Francisco's older but more stable residents. The uniform said he was a member of the property police. Hey, hey, you. Uh, Just a minute there. Just a minute. Nobody lives there. And I hope for your sake, boy, you ain't no Jimmy artist, because I got me a gun under this raincoat. I'm no Jimmy artist. I'm just trying to locate a man named Julian. Ed Julian? That's right. Uh, Mr. Sarcovetti lived here. Well, according to my records, Mr. Sarcovetti and Mr. Julian are the same man. Well, he ain't here now. Moved out bag and baggage a week, ten days ago. Whatever name he used. Uh-huh. Don't suppose you have any idea where he went, do you? Nope. You happen to see him move? Uh, yep. Him and his wife and their clothes. Left all their furniture, huh? Didn't have any to leave. This place was furnished for them. They're the kind of people who never own more than they could carry. That's the way I figured them. Fast traveling and short acquaintances. Now, I once knew a feller up in King City. You see, King City's about 45 miles north of here. That's how the Ed Julian matter stood on a rainy morning in San Francisco. Nothing out of the ordinary for Ed Julian. Yet, all around me, there seemed to be some sort of a dark, threatening undertone that I couldn't quite put my finger on. Whatever it was, it troubled me, standing out in the rain, talking to that old man... It still troubled me when I made my way back down the hill and found, to my surprise, that the San Francisco Classified Telephone Directory listed Edward Julian Enterprises. Expense account item five, ten cents, one phone call. Hello? Hello. I'd uh, like to talk to Mr. Julian, please. He's not in. Secretary's out. Would you like to leave a message? Well, this is Johnny Dollar calling. Uh, He doesn't know me, but I... I'll leave the message for him. When do you expect him back? Never. The rain was just starting up again as I stood in front of the floor-level office at Powell and Hooker. On the door, it said, Edward Julian Enterprises Incorporated. And below it, it said, walk in. I did. Hello? Hello, who's that? Hello. Huh. Hello, who are you looking for? Ed Julian. He isn't around now. Maybe I can help you. Well, maybe you can. I'd like to know something about his enterprises. Why? Why? Oh, I, I want to invest some money. <laughs> <laughs> oh, what's funny about that? You the guy who called me a little while ago? Yeah, I called. I suppose you're the one I talked to. What's your angle? I want to find Julian. So do I. So do a lot of people. What's that name? Johnny Dollar. And I'm Ray Gumby, Ed's attorney. Come on in here. It's warmer. I followed Ray Gumby to the back office of the two-office suite. Watched him as he stood in front of the gas heater. Medium-sized man, 50 or so, wearing a tan sport coat, a wool scarf, a turtleneck sweater. Not exactly the conservative attire usually expected of members of the bar. But then he looked happy about it. Uh, Sit down, Dollar. Have a drink. Thanks, Mr. Gumby. 
Now, cheers. Mm-hmm. <coughs> now, uh, you ask about Ed's Enterprises. Well, I tell you right now, they aren't much. He has an oil field, a piece of a gambling casino, a piece of a racetrack, and a part of a ship, and part of a smelter works. What does he do a couple of weeks ago? He up and unloads it all. Oh, I've, I've had a little cold with all this weather we've been having. <coughs> Why do you want to find him? To protect him. <laughs> That's cute. Personally, I wish the bum would get pneumonia. He left me holding the sack here. How's that? Now, I formed these corporations for him and acted as chairman on all the boards. Then he sold out from under me. Didn't even bother to say goodbye or pay me off. You want to find him too, then? You bet you. I'm suing for proper fees. Think it'll do any good, Mr. Gumby? No, I don't think so. I mean, as far as me getting my money goes. But if I can get him subpoenaed, and he ignores the subpoena, the court will issue a warrant on contempt charges and throw his carcass in jail for a while. If he was behind the bars and I went to visit him, maybe I could handle him. <laughs> the bars between us, of course. Of course. Yeah. You want another knock? No, thanks. Uh, no. You go ahead. <clears throat> That sounds pretty good. It is. Getting him in jail? Yeah, if I can get him served. <clears throat> well, it's not going to be an easy job getting those papers into his hands. Two of my regular boys have already tried and failed. I'm a fool ever to accept such a man as a client. Never do such a thing again. Well, if it makes you feel any better, Mr. Grumby, the man I'm working for said practically those same words to me in Hartford yesterday. It doesn't make me feel any better. I wish it did. And I wish you luck protecting him. Mm. Hey, Mr. Gumby, something just occurred to me. Now, what's that? Well, now, maybe we could work this out together. How? You want Julian to be served with a subpoena so you can have the police pick him up. I want him to be safe, and there's no safer spot than the city jail. Hey. Where's that subpoena? Well, right here. And there's a fee in it if you can get it in his hands. Two hundred, maybe? All right. You say two of your men have already tried and failed to get to him. What happened to them? Been to his place on Knob Hill. I was there earlier today. He moved out. I know. But my men went up there to serve him. Both of them fell down two flights of stairs. Seems like a myth. Maybe Ed isn't living in such high places these days. I hope not, for your sake, Dollar. <laughs> Now, here's our star to tell you about tomorrow's intriguing episode of this week's story. Tomorrow? That's when I begin to find a myth can be stranger than fiction. Join us, won't you? Yours truly, Johnny Dollar. Yours truly, Johnny Dollar, starring Bob Bailey, is transcribed in Hollywood. Written by John Dawson, it is produced and directed by Jack Johnstone. Be sure to join us tomorrow night, same time and station, for the next exciting episode of Yours Truly, Johnny Dollar. Roy Rowan speaking.